we've got a bloody clutch problem. Actually, one minute. Yo, boss. What? I'm just wondering if you'd like to present today's video? Sure, why not? <laughs> Action! Hello, everybody. We've got the bloody clutch problem. You see, I can do his job blindfolded. Okay, like the director says, we've got a bloody clutch problem. The symptoms we've got here, the clutch pedal, after it's been depressed to the floor, it's not releasing fully. It's kind of sticking halfway back. It kind of feels like there was air in the system, if you know what I mean. So what we did was, we put the car in the air and we're gonna have a look underneath to see if there's a fluid leak because the concentric slave cylinders inside the, the clutch bell housings of these gearboxes, they leak from time to time and when they leak, they'll drip out onto the floor. So we're gonna have a quick look. You see there's a little hole there at the bottom of the bell housing and if the slave cylinder was leaking, the fluid would be dripping out of that hole. But there's no fluid leaking here, so I'm gonna assume the slave cylinder is okay at this stage. Anyhow, if we had a leaking clutch slave cylinder, we'd have to take the gearbox out to change that, which is good, because I don't fancy that today. I'm just gonna let this car down. So I've stuck my head underneath the dashboard to have a look at the pedal, and lo and behold, where the master cylinder connects onto the pedal, there's a pin, and it was all loose and wobbling around. The problem here is, the clutch pedal comes in a whole housing with a master cylinder in it as well and you have to take the whole assembly out as one unit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to explain how it all comes apart but I'm not actually going to film it. The reason being it's too dark to get in there and it would be ridiculous. And there's also a second reason I'm not going to actually get my head down there anymore. This taxi absolutely stinks. I'm suffocating in that car. I can't breathe. I think the driver of this car should be thoroughly ashamed and probably take a bath at the same time. Now the first bit is going to be to disconnect the clutch pipes which are just down here at the back of the engine. Because I've already removed this clutch pedal box, it's just going to make it a whole lot easier to show how it all comes to pieces. So from under the bonnet, there's a plastic pipe which goes from your brake master cylinder and down to your clutch master cylinder. When you pull the pipe off the brake reservoir, the fluid is going to run out. So you can either choose to catch it in a bottle or blank the pipe off to stop it running all over the floor. If you pull the clutch pipe off your brake fluid reservoir and let all the fluid run out all over the floor, don't worry, it will stop at a certain level so it's never going to affect your braking system. The thing to remember is before you bleed the clutch you need to re-top up the brake fluid reservoir. You're probably best to remove this pipe from both ends, but this plastic is quite brittle and it can break quite easily, so I'd be careful. The little blue tab here, if you push it, you see it will clip out there. And once that's clipped out, you can just pull the pipe straight off. The lower pipe that comes out of this hole goes round to your clutch slave cylinder. It's a little bit tricky, but if you get a screwdriver underneath, there's a little spring clip that you pull down like that. And then obviously your pipe will just pull straight out. And then you'll have one wiring plug connector here. That's all you really need to do underneath the bonnet. So now I'll show you what you need to disconnect underneath the dashboard. Okay, so the first part, on the lower half of the dash, there's a trim panel. It just pulls down from the top. And then there's two seven mil screws which hold it onto the dash, which you unbolt. There'll be some wiring on this panel, but you just unclip it, easy. And on the end of the dash, there's this little panel which just pops off. Okay, we need to remove the cowling from around the steering column. So you'll have a blanking plug here with a seven mil screw in it. And just up here, there'll be a Torx 25 screw. If you take them two screws out, this panel will literally pull off the bottom of the column. And the top piece of the column cowling just clips onto it and it clips onto the dash as well with these clips 
it all just pulls apart really easily. There's a 10 mil pinch bolt where the bottom of the steering column goes onto the steering rack. If you remove that bolt, you may have to turn the steering like 90 degrees to be able to get onto this bolt. But once the bolt's removed, you can then straighten your steering back up. This won't spin because it's on like a hexagon. Then take your key out of your ignition barrel so the steering can't turn no more. So once that steering column is disconnected from the rack, we don't really want to turn this steering wheel anymore. The reason being behind the wheel is what's called a clock spring. It's like a tape of wires. And if we were to turn the wheel too far, we can break them wires. So it's just a safeguard. So just pull the key out of the ignition and that way the wheel's not going to turn and cause any damage. Anyhow, the next step, there'll be a loom of wires coming round to the ignition barrel and your indicator switches. They all unclip really easily. Just unclip each wiring plug connector and pull them out of the way. And lastly, there are four 10 mil bolts which hold the column to the frame inside the car. With all your column bolts disconnected, this joint at the bottom where it joins onto the rack will literally just slide straight off. This entire steering column with the steering wheel will now lift straight out from underneath your dashboard. Now our steering column's out of the way, just to the left of where the column would be, you'll see this little heater pipe. It's held on by a 7mm screw and a clip. So you just unclip it, pull the screw out of the way and remove this little heater pipe. Okay, on the lower edge of the dash, there'll be a metal bar and this plate is bolted to it with two 10mm nuts. You'll need to remove them nuts and remove this plate. If you don't remove it, you will not be able to remove the pedal box. There are two little tin plates on this pedal box. You only have to remove the lower one, which is like a Torx 30 screw. So we'll take this plate out of the way. Believe me, you have to remove this little plate because it gets right in the way and you can't remove the pedal box with it in place. And now from underneath the dashboard, all you have is three 13 mil nuts. Two at the top of the pedal box and one at the bottom. And then you can just pull your pedal box forward and wriggle it out from underneath the dash. I'm now going to remove the master cylinder so we can see exactly what's gone wrong with this pedal box. The pivot pin for the clutch is behind here, so I'm just gonna push this housing out of the way so we can get better access to it. So this clip's pretty straightforward. You just lift the tab up with a flat screwdriver and it literally just pops off. And then we can just slide the master cylinder pivot off. Because of the design of this pedal box, this master cylinder is pressed up against the firewall in the car. So there's no way you can actually remove this without removing the pedal box first. So from the back of this master cylinder, you literally need to grab it and twist it clockwise and it will turn like 45 degrees. Then you can just pull it forward and it will come out. And there you go, one clutch master cylinder. But this is our problem. This is the pin that the clutch master cylinder rod connects onto and it's loose. And just to show you, that pin is actually welded onto the other side of the pedal. So what's happened, the pin's actually sheared off. And as I pull it out, we can just see where it's broken. So we're lucky that didn't fall out the pedal or we would have lost the clutch altogether. Because of the work involved in removing this pedal box and steering column and everything, I'm going to fit a brand new master cylinder anyway because the car's done over 100,000 miles. So I may as well change it now while it's all apart. And just in case you need to know, there's the part number for the master cylinder. And if you would like to purchase a new clutch master cylinder to complement your pedal box, it's going to set you back another £94 plus VAT. So how much is that pedal? £113.95. One new pedal box. Wow. Look at that. Yeah, cheeky gits. They don't even give you a clutch pedal rubber with it. Right, we'll just pop our new master cylinder into the new pedal housing. Turn it anti-clockwise until it locks into position. Fit the master cylinder rod onto our pedal pin. And pop our securing clip into position. That's it then. One new pedal box ready to be fitted. So now our new pedal box is all built back up together. 
obviously fitting it is just a reversal of taking it apart. But the one thing you will have to do is bleed the clutch. In order to get to the clutch slave cylinder bleed nipple, you'll have to remove your air box, which is basically two 7mm screws and one Jubilee clip. And then if you pull up on the air box, the whole lot will come straight out. I'm showing this on the bench because it's a bit difficult to show it on the car. But with your air cleaner removed, you'll see your clutch bleed nipple on top of the gearbox. You'll probably have to remove the blanking plug. If you've got some clear washer pipe, you can then fit that over the bleed nipple, as long as it's a nice snug fit. And your little lever here, you can turn that usually around about 180 degrees. If the bleed screw is not in the form of a lever, it will probably be an 11 mil nut, which will undo a turn and a half. And if you have that washer pipe going into a bottle of brake fluid, all you need to do now is pump your clutch pedal nice and slowly up and down about six or seven times. And you should have a clear stream of brake fluid traveling down your pipe. You can then just pull your pipe off lock your lever back into the off position and that's it your clutch system should be bled oh and once you've bled the clutch don't forget to re-top up your brake master cylinder to the maximum level this is one of those jobs that might look difficult but it's actually quite easy as long as you follow some straightforward steps you know this is the second time now we've had a clutch pedal pivot brake on a mark 5 mondeo I could understand it if it was like a Peugeot Expert van because the clutches on them vans can get really heavy to push down. But these Mark V Mondeos, the clutches aren't heavy. Well, I don't know why it's broke. All I can assume, it's made of cheap monkey metal. But I will say, this car has 146,000 miles on the clock. Oh well, that just leaves one thing left to do, put this clutch pedal box where it belongs, in the trash can. See ya.